Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel again. Today, let's see some really interesting non-fiction book recommendations. When it comes to fiction, I read fantasy, I read magical realism, I read historical fiction, I read anything that is put out to me. And when it comes to non-fiction, it is the same. I read a plethora of genres and I love reading science, history, memoirs and so much more. So this recommendation is going to have all those genres as a mixture and I have three categories to talk to you today. One is science, the other is memoirs and the last one is history. So now let's get on with the memoir section. So I have three memoirs here. The first one I want to talk about is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. If you are a beginner for non-fiction, I would highly recommend you to check this book out because it is outright funny. I had to stop in between and laugh and then continue reading it. This book is funny but it speaks a lot of very serious topics like racism, apartheid, colonization and the effects of generational trauma. It's it's really tough topic but the author has made it very very funny and simple and accessible for you to read. If you don't know who Trevor Noah is, he is an American stand-up comedian. He is a colored person and he has explicitly uh, described how life is in Africa in the 90s and how being a colored kid affected him so much during his upbringing. And he talks about his mother, his father who's from Switzerland and how uh, he maintained that relationship between both of them and how domestic violence was there a part of uh, African culture for so long. And it, it's really, really very interesting to read about the African culture during a uh, 90s but I found it very very similar to Indian culture at the 50s and 40s so we are a little bit ahead of them but there's no much difference and this is a book that you have to read and enjoy and it also can be informative because I for one uh, learned a lot about African culture and the apartheid which I didn't know much about before this was a fun way to get the information also and have a good time so I would highly recommend you to check this out. Next is a book that I'm currently in the middle of and I'm halfway through it, more than halfway through it. And I love it so much and I wanted to recommend this to you. The book is In Order to Live by Ionmi Park. So this is the story of Ionmi Park and she is someone who has escaped from North Korea and she's just telling us the story of her escape and her life during uh, her times in North Korea. And you get to learn a lot about North Korea which we generally don't get to know. Uh, because I for one haven't uh, had any idea about North Korean culture or North Korean government or its imposition and oppression on people. I had no idea. So this has opened my eyes. So you basically get to know her and uh, the life she spent in the North Korean and China border and her attempt to escape North Korea. You will learn a lot about North Korea that you haven't learned before. It is very very eye-opening and kind of very uh, very unsettling to know that this kind of government is still existent. If you have read George Orwell's 1984, this North Korean government is kind of that uh, that is depicted in that book. There were so many similarities that were found in the uh, government and the book that were that was very very um, surprising for me to know. If you know what I'm talking about, the concept of double think, which is mentioned in the 1984 book. It's playing a huge role in this uh, uh, tactics of the government and it's really very interesting and very very sorrowful to read. Uh, although this is a story of hope also and uh, you need not worry about the uh, sorrowful part. She describes a lot of happy memories also which was really very heartwarming and I really feel for her and I think that everyone should read about this story of survival and of freedom and of hope. Next is a book that I have recommended multiple times on this channel. If you have been following me, you would, this would not be a surprise for you. And I'm talking about The Happiest Man on the Earth by Eddie Jaku. This is a story of a uh, survivor of the Auschwitz concentration camp by the Nazis. This story is really impactful and power packed. And I, I, I really want every one of you to read this book because it's fairly short and I have annotated this like hell. And this is a book that I have reread also this time. This man will just steal your heart. He has gone through so much of uh, unspeakable sorrows and still calls himself the happiest man on the earth. So this will just put you on a perspective mode to look at your life and reflect upon the things that you have gone through. But still you can have hope and love your life no matter what. 
So this story will give you a glimpse of the history of Nazis uh, concentration camps and the kind of political setup that was during that time and all the unspeakable horrors that happened in the Auschwitz camp. It's really heart-wrenching but it's a story of hope again. So these kind of stories I love because it ends with a positive note and uh, no matter what happens to you, you can still choose to be happy. That is what the book says and I stand for it. So I highly recommend this to you. That is all for the memoirs and we are moving on to the history section of this recommendation and the first book is Kohinoor by William Dalrymple and Anita Anand. This is the story of the most infamous diamond of the world which was in the Indian history for so long and it has gotten into the British hands much later during the independence time. So this is a kind of uh, a story which does not only talk about the British imperialism but much before that, uh, when uh, many of the kings or the Mughal emperors who had this in their hands, like Shah Jahan and so many more, and uh, people tend to think that this diamond has been cursed because those who have uh, been holding on to it have been eternally dead. So this is kind of told in an interesting story where uh, they have done the most justice to the history that have been uh, not the part of uh, what we usually read. So they have done a lot of work in collecting the um, history, collecting the documents, collecting the facts about this uh, Kohinoor before uh, the actual history we have. So uh, I found this very interesting. I found it very entertaining. And uh, the fact that how British people took this from a very young 10-year-old Punjabi king, uh, I think his name is Dilip Singh or something, I'm not sure. But the king was only just 10 years old and they took it from him. And uh, to read the entire history of the Sikh kings uh, during that time was very, very interesting. It uh, also uh, includes a lot of topics like Sati system and everything. So it is not just the story of this time. And it is a story of us, of our history, of our ancestors, of our struggle for freedom, of our struggle for identity. And it was very overwhelming when I finished it. It is really, really a very nice book. And it, it has the entire history of this diamond. If you are looking for something like that to read and to get to know our history, I would highly recommend this book. Check it out. So the next book is a book that I'm really, really very excited for because this is a, a history of our planet. So this can be a mixture of history and science and geology. So this is a very, very, very favorite book of mine. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And that book is The Ends of the World by Peter Barnan. So Peter Barnum is a kind of a journalist who is also interested in paleontology. He's interested in fossil collection and those things. So that led him to writing this book basically. And he has written about the five major mass extinctions of the earth. So you, if you think that the extinction that killed the dinosaurs are the biggest one, then you are wrong and you are in for a big surprise. There is one more biggest event of extinction that happened be before that Jurassic event. And this, uh, we'll talk about that, you will be in a very, very huge shocking surprise because that was the biggest mass extinction and that killed almost 99% of the creatures of the earth. And this book, since it is not written from a paleontologist perspective or not by a scientist, this is very, very uh, accessible. The language is very good. He tells it like a story. He tells you how the meteoritic factor uh, was involved in the extinction of dinosaur play a huge role and uh, the story of its discovery was well written well documented I, I loved my time with this book it was so entertaining so scientific so uh, informative and it is so dramatic if you think of it it's really really very well done I would highly recommend you to check this book out this is one of my very very favorite non-fiction books of all time the next book is the most famous book uh, out there for nonfiction. You can see this book in every nonfiction recommendation. And I also included this because I feel like everyone should read it. And that is The Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. Think of this book like if some alien comes to this world and uh, it has been watching us without involving itself for the past two lakh years or since the earth formed or something like that. If that alien wrote a book, I think it would be like this because the author has detached himself from the uh, writing, detached himself from the happenings that had happened in the earth for past uh, so many years. He does not put any uh, of his own thought in it, but 
kind of a mere observation of what happened and that is what i liked in this book so much this does not lean towards any kind of uh, theory or any kind of religion or any kind of racism or anything for that matter he has just documented what had happened in this earth for so long that is really a very interesting take you will never see the uh, earth uh, the same again after reading this book it's really really um gives you a very interesting perspective on many things like money like religion like agriculture so many things have been discussed with a very new perspective i loved it but this is not beginner friendly you have to sit with it for it to uh, like it so i think that if you give it time you will love it i have read this book and its sequel homo deus homo deus speaks about the future and that was also very very interesting and these two books as a duo was just mind blowing for me to read it is really very captivating and i am thinking about the future and i think about the past and it's really uh, a kind of i mean the fifth dimension of time where i can see everything it's a weird way to express myself about this book but this is what it made me feel and i highly recommend this book and homo deus for you to check out the last history book that i want to talk to you about is a book about history of us indians and how did we come and settle here where did we come from for how long we are in india this is what this book talks about and this is the best book out there to read for this kind of topic and that is early indians by tony joseph again tony joseph is a journalist and he has uh, accumulated all the dna based uh, papers that have been uh, published regarding this topic and he has uh, uh, just drawn out a story for us based on science actual dna science and it is very very interesting and this talks about how we have come out of africa 65000 years ago and how did we come here uh, how strong we were as a harappan culture and how uh, all those things you know uh, i don't want to spoil this book for you it's really very interesting it talks about a lot of stuffs how the branching of homo sapiens happened and at what time interval it happened and how science has played an important role in discovering all these facts and how it has given us a clarity of how everything has originated from africa and this is a really nice story to read about because this is a, a controversial topic in india for such a long time and i think this anyone who want to know uh, what actually the truth is they can check this book out and i have read this book and annotated it like anything this is the most satisfying book to watch after i have finished it i have almost annotated every page of this book and this was suggested by my father so i owe it to him that i had a very good time with this book and i highly 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 recommend this book to you to check this out so that is about the history part of this recommendation and we have only three more books left and all those are science based the first book i want to talk to you about is astronomy and that is a subject that i adore the most i love when i read astronomy and the most accessible author for astronomy books are the neil degrasse tyson's book he is the rock star of astrophysics so i love him so much and this book is written by and that is the astrophysics for people in a hurry and it's by neil degrasse tyson this is a fairly short book and you can read it just in an hour or so and this is a very brief gist of what we know about astrophysics so far and he has documented in a very funny and accessible way and like the says it is for the people in hurry and you just read it in a whim and it is very very short and um, this talks about um, uh, the discoveries of black holes this talks about the discovery of gravitational waves and this talks about big bang theory if you are someone who are looking for some uh, astronomy books to have fun with this is the book that you can check out The next book is a book that was gifted by my father and this is a book that I adore because not only it is very informative but it is also such fairy tale esque edition of Woman in Science by Rachel Ignatovsky I think she is Russian and I am pronouncing it wrong but this is a compilation of all the women scientists and their history so this book basically follows a lot of women scientists and their contribution and the artwork in this book is so good it is so precious to look at and it gives so much motivation to as to how women have played a huge role in science which is seldom talked about we only know madam marie curie and very few others but this book has talked about so many people who has dedicated their lives to the experiments their discoveries and everything which was very very 
overwhelming for me to read and to get to know them. It's really, really a good book and I highly recommend for all of you to check this out. The last book that I want to talk to you about is, is written by an American-based Indian neuroscientist and he's kind of considered as the Marco Polo of neuroscience and that book is Telltale Brain by V.S. Ramachandran. So he has written an, another book called Phantoms of the Brain and that was also a huge hit and this is a book about uh, brain and its chemistry and its working nature and everything. So he has done a lot of experiments on people who have some kind of uh, abnormality in the brain and uh, with the result he has trying to get to know the actions of a normal brain. So basically he is a kind of neuroscientist who is trying to figure out what and how the brain actually works. So this is talking about a lot of stuff and it's really really very interesting one if you read about it. Uh, it's kind of very interesting how the brain works and uh, how the evolution of the brain has been for us and uh, why has it evolved certain things that it has now. Everything is talked about in this book. It's kind of really uh, nerdy and scientific so if you are someone into reading science books that are very very nerdy this is the book for you. So despite all these experiments and all these uh, working things, the brain still remains a mystery to us and he is trying to figure it out along with us. So if you are someone interested in neuroscience and something like that, check his book out. And if you are not uh, uh, read anything about neuroscience or brain before, this also is a very good book for uh, a beginner. And I think this is a great book for recommendation and I hope that you love it too. So that is pretty much it guys we have come to the end of this video i have recommended everything that i have mostly read in non-fiction all these books are really close to my heart and i hope that that will bring you uh, immense joy and uh, a kind of satisfaction after reading these books so as always do let me know what are the books that you want me to check out in non-fiction genre and i will definitely check them out and until i see you again with the very next video for bookish content this is sushmita signing off keep reading Bye bye